Ho, ho, ho! Would you like to see what Santa got me for Christmas? Besides this uh, Calcifer Christmas sweater? Is there any Howl's Moving Castle fans in the audience? Check this out. Ho, oh, wow. We're getting fancy over here now, aren't we? That's right, I'm this much more official now, so I don't have to have the microphone all the way down here, and I gotta jack my gain up, and then you gotta hear all kinds of background noise. Well, here we are, end of the year again, so time to look back on all the albums I happen to have heard in the year 2022, and there are 24 of them, uh, varying from Def Leppard to The Weeknd to Porcupine Tree to fucking Megadeth, to Harry Styles, to um, what else is on here? Ozzy, got Jethro Tull, crazy, just all over the place this year. But um, yeah, I guess let's kick this shit off. Let's pogo stick this shit. Instead of like jump right into it, we're just going to pogo stick it. Anyway, let's go. I mean, Harry, you knew this was coming, Pete. Yeah, is it any surprise that the Harry Styles album is in last place? And I know I'm gonna sound kind of crazy, but it wasn't terrible. Honestly, it wasn't ear piercing, even though some tracks were like I was straight up skipping some tracks my second time through it. Also, if you're wondering why the hell I listened to Harry Styles' new album, is because actually several albums we're going to talk about are because of my uh, good friend Nick, who you might have seen in the Origami Angel video, who also got me this hoodie and this mic stand. Um, so, good guy. But we have a podcast, and sometimes we talk about some bands, and then he makes me listen to albums. Too, so like I can have an input, uh, which I believe there are three of them this year. Um, and this one obviously is the one I'm not going to go back to. I do not want to listen to more Harry Styles, thank you. But objectively, it is pretty well written and produced. But like, it's still Harry Styles, so I don't really want to be alive when I'm listening to it. Also, uh, starting this year, I'm going to tell you my favorite and least favorite song on every album, because why not? And on this one, I think it was As It Was. That was my favorite song, or the best song, rather. Because, like I said, that one wasn't terrible. But then you have shit like Boyfriends or uh, Little Freak, which I'm just nope. Nope, I'm noping out on. That was an extremely boring song. And speaking of extremely boring songs... Yeah, Arctic Monkeys' new album, The Car, kind of fucking sucks. Now, the first time I heard this album was coming right off the first one, immediately after it. we listen, I listened to them back-to-back, -back, also with Nick, funny enough. Um, and because I, I went to the first one, uh, whatever people say, I, I, they think I am, I'm not, whatever, I, whatever it's called, which was extremely high on my Your Albums Ranked, because it was a lot of fun. It was a very, very fun album. And then you move to The Car, and oh my god, it was so mind-numbingly boring. I mean, you look at the album artwork, and it's just one car, and it's just like a very boring-looking photo, and that's exactly what you get on the album. Oh my god, after the first album, this was miserable to sit through. Every song sounds the exact same, and for an album with this little variety, it should have just been a single or like a 20 minute EP, not 40 minutes. Best song was Body Paint, I suppose, because at least a, li a, like a little something happens in it. Um, worst song, everything else, because it all just sounded the exact goddamn same. I'm sorry. Okay, next up we have another album that came from that Your Album's Ranked with Shovels and Rope Manticore. Now, the first time I heard it, 
Oh my God. How many of these albums did I hear with Nick? This is three. Spoiler alert. This is going to be the first four albums we're talking about. I heard with my friend Nick. What the fuck? Um, but yeah, this is like that folk, folky um, record that someone gave me. I don't remember where it was on that list, but it was probably higher up because now it's third on the bottom and simply because I don't know what happened, but second time through it, I liked it so much less. Like it drags so damn hard, you know, when every song is the exact same BPM, give or take five, maybe sung in the same like hushed way. I actually kind of started to skip tracks past like the halfway point because there's like five, six minute songs on here that just that just drone on and I I, had, I just noped out. However, No Man's Land is still a really goddamn good song and the main reason it's above the other two because damn, that's a really good song. Definitely the best song on here. Worse, probably Bleed Me. I think that's the one that just droned on the longest. I just, I couldn't do it. Okay, Pool Kid self-titled from this year. Oh, sorry, Nick. I mean, they're kind of fun live. They were definitely fun live, but just listen to the album. It's kind of like more whiny core. If you guys have seen the Origami Angel video, which not a lot did, but like I get it. If you heard any of those songs, this is kind of along the exact same lines, except way less interesting. And just one of my biggest music pet peeves is when the vocalist just never shuts up. I think that's exactly why I like I can't listen to rap and shit like that because like they just never shut the hell up. This is the exact same thing too. Just vocals, vocals, vocals. I mean, you're a, a music band. Just play the instruments once in a while, would you? You know, it's it, most of it is chill. It's fine. I don't want to say it's a bad album because it really isn't. It's just, um, I just don't think I'd revisit it. But the best song I liked further the most and worse, uh, I think, Talk Too Much. Yeah, you, they talk too much. Exactly. That's, that's the worst, that, uh, worst song in the album. You talk too much. The whole album. Okay, yeah. Another one from that your someone gave me. And it's probably a lot lower this time around. Um, but I, I don't... I'm not going to say it was bad. Just not one that I would... Like, the way I'm judging these is like how often I would want to listen to the whole thing, you know? Because it's a whole album experience, and as far as that goes, this one, it's really fucking long. It's like 80 minutes, and, you know, with double albums, it's really hard to want to listen to the both discs, you know. Unless we're talking The Wall or Goodbye Yellow Bick Road, it's really hard to keep focus on these double albums. I mean, there are several songs I really don't care for, namely both those rap songs. Um, what was it? Grim Reaper and Sadie's Sadie something. Least favorite song. Gaia is still my favorite song. That song is awesome. And the first song, like the first like 19 minutes or so, that's a pretty good jam too. But um, yeah, Dripping Tap. And then Presumptuous. That was a really good song too. But besides that, uh, not really a whole lot I'd want to go back to as of now. And also the transition from Gaia to a Ambergris was a really, really smooth one. I really like that. And the final album I listened to with Nick, uh, Minus Our Boys, which we'll get to them later. It's every song is like very production heavy uh, like there's a lot going on in all of them and there's a bunch of like production hooks going on throughout the whole thing um especially in chemicals that was my favorite song i think that was a pretty good one but then we have songs like halloween 18 which not the movie um you know the only good one out of the new ones 
uh, the song. There's a lot, a lot going on in that song. And it gets a little bit much sometimes. But I do like this. I, I will, I would revisit this album most certainly. And the award for most disappointing album in a lifetime goes to Closure Continuation. You know, when I heard the news that they were coming back, I, like everyone else, fucking was losing my shit. And then we got their band photo and there was a particular person missing. And everyone was like, where the fuck is Colin? And they they kept releasing shit, like photos, interviews. Colin is nowhere to be seen. Um, Harridan drops and everyone's like, oh shit, who's on base? Did, did he get Nick Beggs or something? And turns out it was, it's just Steven. Because the album started by him and Gavin jamming, and he was on bass. And so he was like, oh, I think I want to uh, play bass on this album. So, yeah, we're not going to talk to Colin. We're just going to pretend he doesn't exist. Because he never fucking reached out, although the other two guys did. All right, Steven. Well, what, you can't text? You can't call? Phone goes both ways, buddy. Call him up. I'm sorry. The whole that whole situation just tarnishes this album like a lot for me because it's a real dick move. It's a real dick move. It's kind of like when Sabbath reunited for 13, but it was uh no Bill Ward cuz some bullshit. Exact same shit here. No Colin cuz some bullshit. Anyway, that's enough of the backstory. The actual album the only song on here that I really like is Chimera's Wreck. Everything else is just like good. Like Harridan is good. And then everything else is okay. The, the more time that went on, the lower this got. Like I had this at, no I put this at number eight on my uh, review. If I was to listen to all of them again, I'd probably be like 10. I, I have no doubt in my mind. Yeah, if this is how the band is going to be from now on, uh, maybe it should just be closure. Alright, anyway. So, Ozzy's new album. Patient number 9. As I said before in my Ozzy video, you know, considering the facts that, like, his health and his age, it's really surprising how decent this album actually is. Like, I'm not in love with anything on it, but I can't say I didn't like any of the songs either. Um, best degrading rules, I think. Oh, I forgot to... Uh, I don't even know what my least favorite song on uh, Closure was. Probably like Of The New Day, because that one's just really boring. So, yeah, that was my best Chimera's Wreck, worst Of The New Day. For the last one. And this one. Yeah. Degrading Rules. I think. Was my favorite one. And one of those days. Was my least favorite. No particular reason why. But like. I just had to pick one. So. That one got the boot. Okay. And. One of the. Biggest. Also one of the biggest surprises. In Prague. Is Jethro Tull coming out. And you know what's even crazier? He's already said. Yeah. Like there's a new album coming out in 23 as well. So what the fuck? Um, I guess we're talking about Jethro Tull again next year. But as far as the Zealot Gene goes. You know. For um, old man Jethro Tull. And with. Um, you know. Voice shot Ian Anderson. This is also a pretty good album. Every song is almost equally decent. And still, the transition from Brief Visitation... I th what was it? Where did Saturday go? I forget which the one before Brief Vis Visitation is. But, uh, oh, Three Loves Three into Brief Visitation. That transition is so goddamn seamless. If you weren't paying attention, you wouldn't even know the song changed. That's how good it was. Um... 
But yeah, my favorite is still Mine is the Mountain. I love the way he's like uh, singing it or like narrating it. And that flute interlude in the middle is still really good. And my least favorite is still The Fisherman of Ephesus or whatever. Uh, totally forgettable. I I, I wouldn't be ob- uh, I wouldn't be mad if I never heard that song again. But yeah, I am very curious on this uh, upcoming one as well because I kind of like this one. Okay, so we have Heavy Pendulum from Cave In. Now this is a band that I uh, went through like I don't know a year ago, and they're they're just like a, a heavy band, you know. Just simple, heavy music, right? Um, and this album, it's it's a decent album full of many, you know, headbangable riffs. You know, this is another album that's really long, but there's no real, like, low points. Um, but then also no real uh, high points as well. It's just a, a, a solid jam throughout. That's all it really is. I thought Careless Offering was my favorite song. The lead-in track before this one probably helped because it just kind of set it up really nicely. And then just kind of goes ham. And if I had to pick a least favorite, probably Reckoning um, is just the only song that I kind of stopped headbanging to. So, here we have Machine Head of Kingdom and Crown. And the only reason I listen to this album is because I had to know. I had to know what they would do after Catharsis because that album was such a goddamn nightmare to listen to. Holy shit. So anything they would have put out would have been better. Let's be real. And this album, kind it's, it's kind of good. It's kind of good. Surprisingly so, it's really kind of good. There's a lot of great things, but there's also a lot of frustrating things. Like, like My Hands Are Empty. That song starts so good, but then it just goes back to, like, the same shit they always do. And then even the chorus with, like, like the humming, um, and but, like, the backup vocals really kind of ruin that moment. Like, I like all the songs, but there's at least one thing in every song I don't like. And that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. But at least Rob shuts the fuck up for, like, tw- like two seconds at a time. Uh, there's actually like solos and everything um really great riffs become the firestorm goes so hard the uh, unhallowed unhallowed i think is my favorite song because the riff in that song is really goddamn good chorus is great too um and the worst i just kind of struggled with honestly because like none of them really stood out to me as like i didn't like this song and not even including like the one or two minute interludes but probably like Kill Thy Enemies, even though I still like fully enjoyed that song. Or the first one. It's like 10 minutes long. I love how it starts. Oh my god. I, I really think Rob has a really good singing voice. But then like it just rips off Beautiful Morning after that. And then it's just, you know, the same machine head bullshit for like seven minutes. But it's fine, I guess. <laughs> Okay, now I'm pissed because apparently this stupid goddamn audacity stopped recording and I made it all the way up until number seven. So I just talked about like, I just talked about like seven fucking albums and now I got to talk about them again. So that's cool. And I, I don't want to use the ca- uh, fucking camera audio because it sounds like death. So I guess we're uh, going back to all the way to Primus. Oh my god. Son of a fuck. Alright, anyway. what I say? Okay, the title track is really great. Um, I still love all those jazzy guitar notes or riffs. And then... Um, not jazzy, the way, like the wavy, like surfer uh, guitar chords. I really like those. And then the conspiracies at the end of the song were really pretty funny. And then we have Follow the Fool, 
which is it's just mad catchy. It just kind of makes me want to do a little jig, you know. Look at that there fool. But yeah, best song is Conspiranoid. Worst, Aaron on the side because I I could not care less about that song. Jesus, now I have to keep checking Audacity to make sure it's still recording. All right, Dream Widow. And this is where I'd show it. If I had it, one of two albums that I couldn't get because they decided to do a stupid vinyl only, like limited release on dumbass uh, record store day on Black Friday of all days, you know, the day I have to work. So, oops. Oh, sorry, you can't uh, wait in line for like four hours to get into the stupid record store where they might have like three copies of this vinyl. Oops, sorry, you're out of luck. Anyway, the bookends are really good. Um, like the last track, like the long like 10 minute instrumental one, I think that one is just so much fun and so good. And then we have March of the Insane, which... Is again a lot of fun, nice and brutal. But I kind of wish that Dave would have like, if it, vocally he did like you know like the death metal like <laughs> like he the, like how he does on March of the Insane the whole time because when he's using his like normal like singing voice, I don't think it's nearly as effective. And you know with a song like Angel with Severed Wings, which was my least favorite song on here. It's pretty much why, because it just kind of sounds like heavier Foo Fighters, you know, instead of like this new, like evil band. But yeah, best song, still like that last Latin titled song, whatever it's called. All right, my boys, Def Leppard coming in with Diamond Star Halos. And probably a few too many songs. I mean, let's be real. 15 is a lot. And, like, only two of them are really good. But those two, you know, take what you want. Great intro to an album. Fuck Back to back with the bookends being the best songs. They're just... I don't know why. They're always, they're always, they just always end up being the best. But, yeah. From here to eternity... Easily one of the five best songs they ever wrote. I will fight anyone over this because that shit is a straight up masterpiece. But then you have songs like Fire It Up and This Guitar and Lifeless and Unbreakable. That's just like, ugh, I can't do it. I can't do it. This guitar is easily my least favorite. It was just kind of miserable to listen to. But yeah, a lot of songs are whatever, but... There's a few really strong highlights here. Okay, top 10 time, man. And now we have Magma with whatever it's called. And this just dropped out of goddamn nowhere. I already had my list. Like, I had the post scheduled. Um to drop, you know, where I listed all the albums this year. And then in that time, Magma comes out and I had to say, shit, I got to edit this list now and to include it on there. Because it just kind of came out of nowhere. And despite that, it's one of the best albums of the year because Magma apparently can just do no wrong. Their shit is so bizarre. I, I don't think I'm ever going to rank their albums because this is like number 15 now. And I just, I don't know how I'd even think about doing that. It's like an explosion in the sky, but way worse. Because like it's like twice the amount of albums. Because it's just good. They just put on an album and it's just good. I don't know what else to say. Because, you know, like they have like the co constant choir singing. And in a made up language nonetheless. So you don't even know what the hell they're saying. But like, does it even really matter? Because the music is just like this easy listening jazzy the whole time and it's just it's just a really pleasant experience like i don't even know what my favorite song was like the first or third track i guess like what's the worst i don't know second track whatever i don't even know what the songs are called doesn't matter because you just throw it on 
and you're going to have a good time. And speaking of coming out of nowhere, a Kirk Hammett solo EP, and it's this good? What, what planet is this? Just the fact that we got a solo anything from anyone in this band is ridiculous because I think everyone knows just how strict they were back in the day. But I guess times change and it's like, yeah, yeah, go ahead and put out your own solo thing. Maybe because it was just under Kirk's name and because Jason wanted to do like a whole other band. Maybe, maybe that's why or uh, maybe they're just like, who gives a fuck anymore? Um, because Kirk didn't have any riffs on Hardwired. Um, so here you go. Here's a whole EP just full of them. And let's be real. It's better. Because he dropped High Plains Drifter. And I was like, man, this is really cool. And I, I don't think any of the other songs really reach the height of that song. But to be fair, it'd be pretty hard too. Because it's just like a movie score. And a really, really good one. Like, if Kirk scored a movie, I think he'd really be good at it. Um, but yeah, best song, High Plains Drifter, Worst, The Gin. I don't really care for that one at all. Alright, Return of the Boys with Origami Angel, Return and Depart. A two EP thing that I combined together because it's like a whopping 10 minutes long. But um, it's mostly for the second one. Depart, really, really good stuff. Like, just four and a half minutes of just brutalness, blasts, just headbanging ass riffs. And then we have this first EP, Return, which is just clean stuff and pretty, pretty solid. But it's mostly for Depart that it's this high up. Because we have uh, Judge was my favorite song. Worse, I guess, was Francis. Only one that's just kind of forgettable. And the last of the Your Albums ranked comes with Earthless, Night Parade of 100 Demons from my good old friend Josh. Everyone's favorite guest host on the show. Um, and don't worry, he will get his own full episode next month. But yeah, we have the other three track thing where the first two are just the title tracks, part one and two, and then the other one, Death to the Red Sun, which is still the best one, easily. Um, the first two are pretty repetitive. And the third one is two, but the riffs in that one are so much better. I don't even care that it's repetitive as well because it just goes so ham the whole time. And yeah, if the other two songs were just as good, it, this would probably be like number three on this list. All right, finally back to where I was before I noticed this stupid ass audio wasn't recording. I was just about to talk about the sick, the dying and the dead. And, um, yeah, from here on out, I, um, own all these albums, so take your guess on what's going to be next. Anyway, but yeah, first up is Megadeth, and, you know, also pretty surprisingly better than I thought it was going to be. Dirk is mostly the reason for that, because, holy shit, he's playing on here. And like the, the, the few amount of Dirk Blast that we actually get are just so good. And oh my god, there's so many good intros on this album. It's ridiculous. There's a lot of great riffs on here. Oh my god, very few low points. The best song I think was the, the title track still. Still really like almost everything in there besides that cringy ass bridge section. Which I went into a whole thing about in the Megadeth video where I just so sick of Dave doing that shit. And worse, Psychopathy. Because it's the only song that just, why does this exist? You know, consider yourself lucky, junkie. Because if it wasn't for Psychopathy, you would have been the worst. But yeah, that song is just the most pointless thing I think I've heard in a while. <laughs> Okay. 
God, I am just so exhausted at this point. Oh my God, I've been talking forever. Anyway, up next we have Gnosis by Russian Circles. It's just more badass Russian Circle shit. And you know, seeing some of these songs live, because I did just see them, really made it a lot better because I forget what song ends in like the uh, the like the like the just like the chugging riff but one of these songs ends like that and hearing that shit boom in a venue was ridiculous also probably the fact that you know we were in the front row and the one guitarist was literally just right there that was awesome but yeah this is just a band that could just do no wrong man like just like magma like you know Everything they put out, it's just, it's just really good. Like, it's, I think this is why instrumental music is just superior in a lot of ways. Because a lot of, a lot of bands, you know, with vocals and lyrics, like those two, both those te- two things can be very distracting. But like, if you got, just got a, a couple of guys that can really write and play their instruments and they don't sing, it's really hard to mess that up. And, you know, with Russian Circles, it's one of the prime examples. My favorite, I think, I don't know, Betrayal or Conduit, can't really decide. And the worst, I guess, is O'Bran, O'Bran name, whatever, because it's just the interlude one. And I love albums with those because I can just say those are the worst easily. Because I guess they count. Take my breath! All right, and the first album I listened to in 2022 was Dawn FM by The Weeknd. And simply put, it's because three songs. Um, in the last album, After Hours, there were three three back-to-back songs that were just like five out of fives. You know, with Blinding Lights, Save Your Tears, and... Um, I don't want to, not in your honor. Why do I want to say in your honor? What the fuck's it called? Oh my god! In your eyes, not in in your honor. In your eyes. Okay. All three of these songs are just straight masterpieces, and this album does the exact same thing with um, "Take My Breath," "Sacrifice," and "Out of Time." All three of these songs are just straight masterpieces, and they all come you know, all in a row. And that's really why this is this high because holy shit, I love all three of those songs. And you know, uh, there's um, another one, what's it called? Less Than Zero was pretty good. Although it kind of sounds like Last Christmas, to be honest. And then of course we have uh, Jim Carrey. He's like the host of the uh, radio station that you're listening to. So, like, it's just kind of that much cooler. Oh, my God. But then we have the uh, Lil Wayne guest spot. And, my God, I can't even fathom just how dog shit Lil Wayne is. The second he comes on this song, I Heard You're Married. I Skip. Like, it is painfully terrible. Lil Wayne, I can't even imagine one single person on this planet being a, a, an actual fan of him because he's the fucking worst. But yeah, this album also does commit one of my ultimate album sins, and that is the chipmunk voice, which, you know, I, I, I really hate the chipmunk voice, and it does it. In, uh, I don't know why I'm whispering all of a sudden, but uh, yeah, is there someone else does that chipmunk shit? And I, I fucking hate it. I really, I really hate it. <laughs> but yeah, despite the fact that this album commits two of my ultimate sins, Chipmunk and fucking Lil Wayne, those three songs are just really too good to pass up. Oh my god, and the top three spot goes to Impera. Yeah, 
despite this being my second least favorite Ghost album, it still shows up at the number three spot of the year. Because I am a fucking Ghost fanboy. I don't give a shit. I'm not afraid to admit it. I love this band so goddamn much. And the first half of this album, I love it so goddamn much. Kaiserion, Spillways, Call Me Love, Sunshine, Hunter's Moon, and Watcher in the Sky. All of these songs are kick motherfucking ass. And then everything else is kind of shitty. Yeah, 20s is the worst song on here still. That song's a fucking mess. Um, Dark's at the Heart of My Love is just so boring and kind of cringy at the same time. And then Griftwood, what the fuck even is that song? Totally forgettable. I can't even remember one single note from that song. But then it does end, you know, Respite on the uh, Spital Fields. That's a, that's a, it's a good closer. It's a good song. I do like that one now. Um, especially like the last minute, minute and a half. Damn good. But yeah, Kaiserion's my favorite. Yeah, top three for the first half alone. I still feel you inside these broken bones. And uh, the runner up is from my main man, Matt Heafy, with Rashomon. His new band or something with uh, Isan, even though Isan kind of barely shows up. But despite that, Ronin is still a straight up masterpiece. No question about it. The cleans are my favorite part still, but everything in it is very kick-ass. There's just so many great moments sprinkled all throughout this album. But yeah, and anytime he does the clean singing, I think it's just so great. Um, only one I don't really care for is Kamor Kamoribi, uh, the seventh track that features Corey on a solo. It's the only song that I just... I, there's nothing in that song for me. But like everything else, man. Akumu, really great. But yeah, it's all about Ronin, man. It's like this nine minute song that just... After the four minute, exact four minute mark, everything is just phenomenal. Because the first part of the song is good. But it has whatever his stupid name is. Gerard Way. Um, I couldn't care less about his section. Great, great album from, you know, you know the, the main driving force be behind my favorite band of all time. So obviously anything this man like does, I'm going to love. But man, holy shit. With number one, you know, it's kind of like this same, long, uh, same lines as Matt Heafy. Just anything he does... I'm gonna like and anything that this man does I also like or in this case love I was not a major fan of light work the first time I heard it but from the second time on Jesus man I don't know what it is I mean, I think I do. Actually, I, I do know what it is. Um, it's such a soothing album with just so... It just gave me so many chills all throughout it. Um, but, like, not all of it soothes you, like, with Dimensions being this weird industrial heavier track. Um, and likewise, Heartbreaker, I don't really like at all. Um, and Heavy Burden is just kind of okay. But like with Lightworker, Equinox, Celestial Signs, Call of the Void, Moon People. These songs I just absolutely love. I don't know. Just something about the full album experience on this one. It just gave me a feeling that none of these albums did. Or anything else I've talked about this year. And I haven't even talked about Nightwork yet because we have the first three tracks with these chaotic ass songs. Um, 
And then a lot of like okay stuff. But then we get like when you get to Boogus, it just kind of sounds like the Devil's Waltz. And then it's a lot of fun of a track. And then Carry Me Home, which is on the same level as everything on, you know, the main Lightwork album. It's just, oh my God, I love that song. I love so many songs on this album. My favorite album since Z2 by him, easily. Uh, speaking of, it's my favorite album since Z2, which I did just find. Fucking kick ass. This shit is just really great. My favorite song, it's probably Call of the Void, but that's a very hard decision to make. And yeah, my least favorite, Heartbreaker still. But man, I fucking love this album. So yeah, I gotta wrap this up before this camera auto shuts off again because oh my god, I've been talking for like an hour and a half now. Jesus. Um, yeah, those. That, that was my list of the year. Uh, light work wins the 2022 medal um i i still have to do uh i'm gonna do a video where i talk about my favorite album from uh every year i've been alive uh, i i have had that idea in the back of my mind for a, a while now and i have i already have all the albums but uh yeah light work wins the 2022 award we'll see what next year brings us um, the only thing I know for certain is we have Haken, Riverside, and I guess the Jethro Tull album. I don't, I don't know any. Uh, oh, uh, Metallica with Seventy Two Seasons. Those are the, all the albums that I know are coming out. But we'll see. There's always random drops everywhere. So let me know what your favorite albums are. And yeah, I will see you next year. Um, because coming, come March, it shit's going to get wild after my third anniversary video w videos are going to be dropping like a fucking monsoon. All right. So get ready for that. And, um, yeah, have a happy new year. I know I am because I finally don't work new year's day after like 10 years. So that's going to be exciting. And um, yeah, get uh, stay tuned for the next band, which, oh God, I miss doing the, uh, the clues. I don't, I don't know. Whatever. Get ready for Josh. Josh is coming on the next video. It's going to be exciting. Um, unless I'm forgetting something. No, actually, next video is going to be my 10 favorite albums ever. Because I still haven't talked about my favorite albums. Even though I streamed like six months ago all my runner-ups. So, next video is my 10 favorite albums of all time. And camera's going off now.